People thought we played the ladies' tees in the 50s. We didn't. I can't remember five times ever hitting a ball out of bounds. They were just incredible athletes. Patty hit the ball with great height. And for many years, you've been known as one of America's greatest putters. Louise Suggs, boy, what a beautiful golf swing she had. Babe was the best. She'd walk in the locker room and say, well, the babe's here. Who's going to be second? And she transformed the expectations of what a woman can do. Preparing to putt as a comeback story as dramatic as that of Ben Hope. Babe said to me, listen, kid, why don't you turn pro? So Babe hit me on the head and said, kid, I pronounce you a pro. Even if there were tournaments, uh, there wasn't any proper prize money to play for. The men's purses so far outweighed the women's that enough was enough. The LPGA started in 1950. The staging of the events was so primitive. The girls did all of the field duties. We painted our hazard stakes, we did our own pairings, we did everything ourselves. A typical week would be to drive like 1,600 miles. We just were a family. People didn't take women as athletic women. They were either feminine or masculine. Certainly nice to have you back, and what a charming outfit. We had kind of an image to overcome. The only reason that they could make a living was that they worked for equipment companies. We had a swing parade, and we each had a certain club we hit. Here we are, a slice from left to right, putting the visor in slicing position. We were promoting ourselves. We wanted to get women's professional golf off the ground. They just had to sell it to the American public. They didn't think women should be playing golf. This was the early days, remember? We had a lot to overcome, honey. 